Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. Today I'm going to do part two of the ROG Ally OpenRGB reverse engineering video. In the last video, we basically took a look at the reverse engineering process, captured a bunch of packets using Wireshark, and figured out a lot of the effect mode configuration packet and the direct mode packet, which allows you to set the individual LEDs for software-based effects. Then, also in the previous video, we made the start of a ROG Ally controller in OpenRGB, and then we implemented direct mode and tested it, and were able to change the color of the LEDs around the joysticks. So, in this video, I'm going to complete that controller, and the part that we're missing still is the ability to do the effect modes, where we can set the built-in patterns and animations as well as configure parameters such as speed, brightness, uh, direction, and so forth. Um, and so with these additional parameters uh, and having effect mode implemented, then we will have a complete controller for the ROG Ally uh, for OpenRGB. So I've gone ahead and brought back uh, kind of what we had figured out in the previous video. I'm going to ignore the part about direct mode for now. Um, we've already implemented that. So the part we're interested in this video is the effect configuration. So we found one packet that uh, we decoded in the last video, this 5AB3 uh, packet. And then it had the format of that is 5AB300, and then the mode byte, which is one of these modes. So zero is static, one is breathing, two is color cycle, three is rainbow, four, uh, or not for uh, A, which is uh, 10 in hexadecimal, is strobing. So that goes into this byte. Then we have R, G, and B values for the first color. We have the speed value. We haven't figured out what these two are yet. I think this one showed as 01 in certain cases. Uh, my guess would be that could be a direction bit uh, that would tell you which direction the effect is going. And then we have R, G, and B again for any second color if the effect uses two different colors. So I think what we need to do is we need to write ourselves a little table here. Um, let's see, has first color and then we'll do uh, has speed, has direction, and has second color. Now what we need to do is figure out for each of these modes, does it... So we know that static has the first color. It does not have a speed because the static is just a static color. It doesn't move, so that doesn't have a reason to have a speed. And then does it have a direction? Uh, no, because there's no effect that's moving. And then does it have a second color? Also, no. So for the rest of these, we need to open up uh, Armory Crate. So I've opened up Armory Crate now. And we have our colors here. Yellow was the previous color that I had set, and it's still uh, showing. Uh, it's actually persisted across uh, reboots. So uh, somehow, whenever you do change this, it does save it to some sort of non-volatile memory. And the colors saved by Armory Crate uh, do come back whenever you reboot the device. Um, so here we have uh, color. Yellow static is checked. So uh, in our list here, we've got as first color, yes, and then no for everything else. So now the next one we're going to look at is breathing. So let's go and click breathing. And as we can see, uh, breathing has two colors. So we've got like green and red and then we have a speed and it looks like the speed can only be one of three different values so we can drag it to the lowest setting 
If we drag it anywhere in the middle and let go, it just snaps back. So if we drag it up to this range and let go, it snaps to the middle. So it looks like there are only three different settings for the speed. So we'll need to uh, figure out what those are. And as you can see here, I've got it doing the breathing effect slowly. So, well, I guess this is actually the medium setting. But you can see it's going back and forth between green and then red. Uh, and then if we go ahead and set this up to max speed, that's much faster. So red, green. So we need to figure out what these uh, three different speeds are. So it looks like breathing mode has two colors and speed, but it does not have direction. So going back to this for breathing, we can put has first color, yes, has speed, yes, has direction, no. And then has second color, also yes. So color cycle is our next mode. Um, so let's go ahead and look at color cycle. Now it looks like all this has is speed. So if we go ahead and turn the speed up to max, you can see that that cycles through colors rather quickly. Uh, then I'm going to set it down to medium. And it's cycling through colors at a more moderate speed. And then if we go to slow, yeah, it should cycle through colors quite slowly. So for that, it doesn't have any colors. I don't, Visual Studio. Um, let's see, has speed, yes. Has direction, no. And has second color, no. So rainbow, rainbow is like a rainbow wave sort of effect. I'm guessing this one has brightness, or uh, direction rather. So let's go to rainbow. It has direction and speed. Uh, again, it has three different levels of speed, but it also has direction. So we can set direction in one direction. So right, and it looks like Maybe if we turn the lights, that'll be easier to see. But you can see that the effect is going, um, I guess the speed is all the way down. Let's turn the speed up so we can see this effect better. So the red is cycling from, looks like from left to right. And then if we go the other direction, it is going from right to left. So we'll need to figure out that packet um, for the direction. But we can also just go in here and put, does it have color? No. Does it have speed? Yes. Does it have direction? Yes. And does it have second color? No. And then the last one, strobing. Uh, let's go to strobing. So it looks like it only has one color. It doesn't even have a speed. I'm kind of surprised by that because I would expect this effect to have a speed. Uh, it only has a single color. So if we change that, it just changes the color. That's it. Okay, well that's simple enough. So then if we go to our table, we have strobing. Does it have a color? No. Oh, does it have first color? Yes. No. No. And no. So that is all of our effect modes. We've already covered direct mode, which is a separate thing. Um, so this table is what we need 
to be able to write our modes. Right now we only have direct mode. And so we have our values, which the mode values are 0, 1, 2, 3, and A. Uh, those represent our built-in modes. Direct mode is treated completely separately because it's a completely different packet. But we can actually just represent it as something um, that's outside of the range and then check for that in the code. So I've just set that to FF uh, just to put it out of range. But now let's write the other modes. So we have mode. We're going to call this one static. And then static.name equals static. Static.value equals. And then I think I defined an enum in the controller for all of these. Yeah, so I did. So this enum has rog ally mode, static, breathing, color cycle, wave, strobing, and direct. So that has what? One, two, three, four, five modes, and then direct. And those correspond to these. So one, two, three, four, five. So we can use this enum value in our controller here. So the value field of a mode is basically sort of meant to represent the numerical value of that mode in the protocol. Um, but in the con RGB controller, you can actually use it for whatever you want, but normally it's used to hold the numerical value of that mode in whatever protocol the hardware uses. So we're going to set static to the value of our mode to this, which is zero. Um, and then actually we can go ahead and set this one to direct, which is our fake mode ID of FF. Then we can set the flags and this, the flags define several things. The flags define the color mode. They define whether it has uh, saving support, and it defines whether it has speed, brightness, and direction control. So this mode, the static mode, has... Um, so it's, direct mode is going to uh, be a per-LED color mode. Per-LED means that for every LED that we've defined down here in setup zones, which is um, we define two LEDs for the left stick and we define two LEDs for the right stick. And actually, I remember we forgot to change the name of the right stick there. So what this is doing is defining a left stick zone and a right stick zone, each having two LEDs for a total of four LEDs. So if the mode is per LED, that means that it can control each LED individually. So direct mode can control all four independently. But static mode cannot. It can only set a single color for all the LEDs. And in that case, we do what we call mode specific colors. So we'll say mode flag has mode specific color. And then we also, well, this one doesn't have speed. This one doesn't have um, a second color. It doesn't have direction. And it doesn't have, well, we haven't figured out how brightness works. So we're ignoring brightness for now. So we'll just do that. And then static.color mode represents which color mode it's actually using. So a mode may actually have multiple color modes. The options are per LED color mode specific color and random color, which is used for modes that don't have configurable color. But any specific mode can actually have, you could actually have multiple mode uh, color modes for one effect mode. Like you could do, so you just or all the flags together. So you just do mode flag has random color, for instance, if this mode supported both, which it doesn't, just for an example. And so color mode is the one that you want it to actually start out as, uh, kind of the default value. 
And then this will actually switch back and forth when the user clicks the different buttons on the UI. Uh, so actually, that's not that value. It's mode colors mode specific like that and now we need to fill in the color parameters so we have color mode is mode specific and then we have to define the number of colors so colors min is one and colors max is also one because this only has one color so some modes can have a variable number of colors. So it could have one to eight colors, for example. Uh, some of the NZXT controllers do that. And that would let you pick like breathing where it just always breathes the same color or switches between two or goes through a list of colors. And so this device, at least for this mode, it's only the one color. So we can go static.colors, which is a vector that holds the actual color values. And then we do dot resize one in there. So that will make us, basically it'll set up the colors and it'll say it is of size one. And then we can do modes, which is the mode vector for the entire controller that contains every mode that we define. Push back static. And so now we've just registered a static mode to the device. So we're going to do that for all of the other modes. So let's do breathing next. And then the breathing mode has a speed parameter. So mode flag has speed. And then we can set the parameters for the speed. Well, let's do the color mode first, which is, uh, and then the breathing mode was the one that had uh, two colors, right? Yeah, it had the second color. So breathing has two colors. So min two, max two. Actually two. And then we can also add our speed parameters. And we don't actually know what the speed value should be. These we need to get from reverse engineering. So I'm just gonna leave empty spaces. And then the speed value is the default value. So it can go anywhere between min and max. And if the speed value ends up being where lower values uh, or like higher numbers represent um, lower speeds, which sometimes is the case. Uh, you can actually just define min and max that way, uh, even if they are like a bigger number for min and a smaller number for max, the software will be able to go in between those uh, when you drag the speed slider. So let's just go ahead and leave those alone. Uh, then we'll go ahead and create our next mode, which is color cycle. Or first we have to register it. Now this one doesn't have user configurable color, so we're going to just call use the mode flag has random color. And then it also has speed. It has mode colors random because it, again, doesn't have a user configurable color. And then we have speed, min, max, and speed, which we're just going to leave blank. And then we don't have any colors to size because it doesn't use mode specific color. So we'll do modes.push back. Color cycle. And then after color cycle was rainbow, which is rainbow, we call that rainbow wave, I think. And rainbow has random color. 
It has speed. And it also has direction left and right. So we actually have three different uh, direction flags. We have horizontal, vertical, left, right, and up, down. Um, that just changes what's shown on the user interface. Um, but because this is left and right, we're going to use LR. OK. And then we have one more. And that is strobing. And all it has is one mode specific color. And it doesn't have speed, and it doesn't have direction, so that's the only flag it needs. And it only has one color. Okay, so we've defined all of our modes in the RGB controller. The next step is that we need to modify the device update mode function to handle whenever the mode changes. So at the in this controller, in the RGB controller code, we have a function called uh, device update mode. And what we do right now, is, so we just check if the active mode, so in that modes vector, active mode holds an index in the modes vector that is the mode that's active. So if we change modes, then active mode gets changed. So we look up in the modes vector and we see if the value is equal to FF, which I'm going to replace with uh, ROG ally mode direct. So if the active mode is direct mode, we're just going to call device update LEDs, which if we go up to this also checks if it's in direct mode which we can update to use our enum value. And that's going to call this update LEDs function in our lower level controller, the ROG ally controller. Um, and it's going to pass in colors, which is a list of colors that go, that the colors vector is the same size as the LEDs vector uh, so there's four LEDs, there are four colors, and that gets pushed into the update LEDs function. Um, but then we also need to handle the case uh, for the other modes. So we can do else. And then we need to call into the controller. And then I made a function called... I think it's update device. And this has some parameters for the mode packet. Now, what this update device function is going to do is it's actually going to send this 5AB3 packet and it's going to fill in all these different parameters. So it has some parameters. Uh, if we look at the list here, it has mode. So we can do. Um, that is going to be modes active mode dot value. So that's our mode value. And then we need to figure out which colors we're passing in. Now, in direct mode, we pass in the colors uh, from the device level, which are the colors that line up with the per LED mode. But since all of since that's only happening in direct mode, all of the modes that are going to be happening in this else condition will either be random or mode specific. Now mode specific has a color vector that's stored per mode. So it'll be modes active mode dot colors. Uh, and this would either have one or two colors. And then we have speed, which is the numerical value of the current speed, which would be modes active mode dot speed. Brightness, uh, which we haven't implemented yet, but there is a field for it. So let's go ahead and pass it in. Modes active mode dot brightness. And then pattern, uh, I 
think I copied this code from something else because pattern isn't a, a field that we have. So let's just make that zero for now and we'll come back to that later. So this is just gonna pass in all the parameters from the given mode. Um, so let's go to this function. So in the update device function, so this is going to send our update device packet. So it's going to start out by creating a USB buffer of 64 bytes, zeroing it out, set it to 5AB300, which are the first three bytes in our message here, and then set the next byte to the mode value. And then if the colors vector that's been passed in has a size greater than zero, which would be either one or two, we're going to set the first color to uh, bytes four, five, and six, uh, the red, green, and blue values. And then we'll set the seventh byte to speed. Bytes eight and nine, we don't know what those are yet. Uh, we've got those marked as question marks. And then we have the bytes for the second color but we only want to set the second color if the color vector has a size greater than one, which would be two. Uh, if it's only size one, we only want to set the first three and not the second three. Now we'll just leave those as zeros. But if the colors vector is a size two or greater, uh, we will set 10, 11, and 12 to the second color in the vector. Uh, also R, G, and B. And then finally, we're going to send that to the device. So with all of this, we should be able to mimic this packet and send some colors. But I think the first thing we need to do before that is we need to figure out what the values for speed are. So we're going to have to go back to Wireshark for that and do a little bit more reverse engineering. Okay, so we've opened up Wireshark, and I'm going to go back to Armory Crate, and then we're going to set Breathing Mode, which I've already done, but then we're going to turn the speed down uh, to the lowest setting, and that should have sent out a packet. So let's first filter on the 100 size uh, selected, and now we need to scroll up until we see... Oh, let's, let's go down the bottom. And we're looking for uh, 5AB3. So let's find our 5AB3 in Wireshark. Okay, so here is our 5AB3 uh, that is from setting our breathing mode. This is the speed at minimum. So speed is going to be this byte here, the E1. So let's just note that down. Uh, speed, breathing, min is E1. And so that's E1. Now we'll do the same thing, but for medium speed. So we'll go back to medium. We will go back here and look for uh, 5AB3 again. Okay, 5AB3. So we have EB this time. Uh, so it was E1 last time, now it's EB. So, and now we want to find the max. So the maximum, we're going to go up to max, tab back to Wireshark, and look for 5AB3 again.
And now it is F5. So F5 is max. So. Okay, so these are our speeds, E1 to F5. And then let's just double check the direction. So this byte here is O1. And we'll change the direction. So right now it's left. Let's go right. And look for 5AB3 again. And it is O oh, O. Oh. So that is our direction. Left is one, right is zero. Let's make a note of that. Okay. So now we can go ahead and fill in some data in our controller. Uh, we can, let's go ahead and make an enum. Our minimum speed was E1. Medium speed was EB. And our maximum speed was F5. Now what I'm going to try is, right now if I put these in, OpenRGB will actually allow any value between E1 and F5 to be set rather than just these three values. Now we could say that minimum speed is zero and maximum speed is three, uh, two and make an array that holds these values and use like a lookup table. But for the purposes of just allowing more customizability, I, I would like to expose any value in between these ranges if it actually works, because then you could set a finer grained speed than just what is offered by uh, the default software. So we'll do that. And then we'll also define uh, actually, we'll start with a right because that is zero. Okay, so we'll define these, and then we can use those in our RGB controller. So anywhere we have a speed min, we'll put frog ally speed min, and speed max, we'll do speed max, and speed, our default speed will be medium. So we'll do that. Um, now we've got several other modes that use speed, so, so max and medium, min, max, medium, uh, and that's that. So that is all of our speeds, and then our direction so right now we have direction just being set as a boolean or as just a value being passed in but i think that's wrong so what we could do is do like um unsigned int rog ally direction equals and then we can do ally. And right is zero, so we'll start with that, and then we'll do if modes active mode dot direction equals mode direction left. Uh, rog direction equals rog ally direction left 
And then we will pass this in as our direction parameter. Um, where does that get passed in, if, if at all? We'll make that the last parameter here, is direction. Uh, that means we'll have to edit this and change this from pattern to direction. And then the byte after speed The four, five, six, seven. Eight. So let's make sure that's right. So we have RGB speed direction. Um, we decided, well, let's look at that again uh, on Wireshark. So zero, zero, zero was our three RGB values. E1 was our speed, direction, and then we have a zero byte. So I think that's right. So this is direction. Uh, I don't need to say that, so. Okay. So I think that's good. Uh, now we have this, and actually we need to change the declaration of that as well to change this from pattern to direction. Uh, this should hopefully compile and then we can actually try it out. So let's bring up Qt Creator and I'm just going to build this. So now we're just waiting for it to run the build and then we can actually test it. So let's go ahead and put a static color back on here and actually we'll just do a static black just to turn it off uh, that we can see any changes that open rgb makes uh, minimize that and then when it's done building it looks like it's done building we can go ahead and run this okay it's running now we can select the ROG ally. Now direct mode should still work. So we'll try direct mode first. Let's set red, yellow, green, oh, blue. So, okay, direct mode is still working. But now we have a bunch of other modes. So let's try static mode. Now that should have made it go black. Um, it's not doing anything. So let's look at Wireshark. It looks like we are sending something. So I sent yellow, which is FF. And then it set direction to 1. That doesn't seem right. Uh, oh, left is the default direction in OpenRGB instead of right. That's why it's 1. Um, yeah, we might have to change that. Shouldn't affect anything, though, I don't think. Um I'm guessing there's some sort of apply command that we're missing then. So let's go back to Armory Crate and we'll send static again. Uh, we'll just change it to like green. And then we'll go back to Wireshark and look at the packets it sent out and look for that 5AB3 again. Okay, let's go to 5AB3. Right after that, we have a 5AB5 and a 5AB4. Now, this 5AB3, 5AB5, 5AB4. Uh, B5 could be like apply, and then B4 could be like save to flash. Um, that would be my guess. So, afterwards, let's try sending a 5AB5 and see if that works. So we're going to mem set USB buff zero size of USB buff. So that zeroes out the buffer. So now it's ready to use again. 5A, B3, B5, then B4. So we'll send a B5 first. Um, B, uh, OXB5, HID, send 
feature report. So we'll send a 5ab5 right after that. Uh, this might be like an apply command. And we'll see what happens when we do that. So let's go ahead and close out of this and go ahead and rebuild that. And then we'll go ahead and put black back on the official software. And we'll minimize. Uh, minimize that then okay this built so now I can run it uh, okay now we will look at this so direct mode should be working uh, yes direct mode still works now when we change to static I expect the lights to turn off if it applies correctly and it looks like they did so that's a good sign so I think it actually did switch to static mode here now we're gonna go to red Okay, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, white, looks good. And just to make sure LED view is off because it's a mode specific color. Let's try breathing. Um, we need to pick a color. Let's do green. Okay, it's breathing green. And then we need a second color. Let's do blue. So green, blue, and now let's adjust the speed so we can make it fast. That looks pretty fast. Now let's make it slow. That looks pretty slow. So I would say that's working. Now let's do spectrum cycle. This should just be a fade through the rainbow. That's uh, random color type. Let's make it fast. That is pretty fast. Let's slow it down. And now let's go to something that's like in the middle. So, like, medium would be, like, right there at 235, I think. Uh, but the official software wouldn't let you set it to somewhere like here. But it actually looks like it does work. The hardware seems to accept that. So that's cool. Um, I think we're fine to leave it this way and give you more control. Uh, let's do rainbow wave. Um, this one's a little hard to see. Let's go ahead and turn off the lights. Uh, so it is doing a wave. Like, is it going to the left? It looks like it is going to the left right now. We can speed that wave up. And we can make it go to the right. Okay, that's pretty cool. So, I guess the next step would be, um, let's kill off Armory Crate, uh, and that includes the background services, and then I'm going to reboot the ally, actually I'm going to power it off and then power it back on, and because what I'm trying to gather is, did it actually save Rainbow Wave as the uh, selected mode across Power Cycle? So. If I close out everything, so I'm going to go ahead and completely power off. And then we will come back after it is ready to go again. So let's power off. So it's powered on. And uh, what color is the... Oh, uh, they turned off. Okay. This this logo here, before it starts the spinning, that's actually the BIOS. So I think it went into the saved effect, or the saved pattern, which was uh, static black, uh, which is basically like off. 
So that's good. That means OpenRGB didn't save, which is good because um, I think it's that other packet. So we sent the 5AB5, and then there was a 5AB4 that followed right afterwards. I think the 5AB4 is probably telling it to save to its internal memory. So we can actually split that out as its own command and have it save optional, uh, which gives us a little bit more flexibility. So, so let's go ahead and open Qt Creator. So you notice I don't have any of the Aura software starting, which means that the lights haven't changed. It's just in the power up state. So we can just open open RGB. And I'm going to go back and open VS Code, because I like this as an editor a lot better than the one in uh, Qt Creator. Uh, so we already have this function called save mode from one of the other Aura controllers I had copied. So let's go ahead and copy this block of code. And we'll change this from 5ab5 to 5ab4. Uh, and then we also have to copy our definition of the USB buffer uh, down here. So now whenever the save mode is called, hopefully that will actually save the effect. So let's go ahead in here when we have... So device save mode is already set up to call update mode, which applies the mode, and then save mode, which should send that extra save packet. Um, and then on the modes that are savable, we need to add a flag. So mode flag has manual. I think it might be manual save. Manual save means that you can click the button to save, and it doesn't just automatically save when you select the mode. Uh, some devices have modes where you just... Just the act of selecting the mode automatically saves. Um, this doesn't look to be that case, so we have manual save, which is actually better because it's more flexible. Um, so we're going to add this flag for manual save to all of the modes except for direct mode, because direct mode is a special case. So we'll do that. Uh, so the breathing and then static was our last one uh, on the flags field. So that will enable the save button in OpenRGB. So now we have direct mode, does not have save, static, breathing, Spectrum Cycle, Rainbow Wave, and Strobing all have save. And then we have it set up down here to save our mode. When that gets called in the controller, we'll send a 5AB4. The hope is that a 5AB4 is um, the packet. And actually, I realize I don't have the code on the screen just for you to Take a closer look, we are sending a 5AB4 packet on save mode. Save mode gets called in this device save mode uh, function in the RGB controller interface. And it's only enabled if we have mode flag has manual save uh, defined in our mode flags. So we're going to go ahead and compile again. Um, Okay, build, and we'll try it again and see if it survives a reboot this time. So we're going to start, and we'll choose the ROG ally, and I'll turn the lights off again so we can see the rainbow mode a little clearer. Let's go pick rainbow wave. And this time, you notice the device, the save to device button is here. So let's go ahead and pick the right direction. So it's moving to the right, and let's make it fast. So it's moving fast to the right. And now we're going to click save to device. And that's going to just send that one extra packet, 5AB4. It looks like it also caused the pattern to reset. And now, it should survive a power cycle. 
So whenever we power it back on, hopefully it goes into rainbow wave. So let's power it off again. So now we're going to power it on, and the hope is that it goes into rainbow wave to the right with fast speed. And it looks like it is, well, no, that looks like white. Uh, okay, yep, it goes through the BIOS. Yeah, this is the BIOS screen there. And so sometime during the BIOS, it initialized the saved pattern, which is rainbow wave going to the right with fast speed. So that 5AB4, that is the speed command. And so with that, I think we now have everything we need. No, wrong light. I think we now have everything we need to complete the controller for the ROG ally. And we can go ahead and push it. So I think that's basically where I want to stop with this video. I think that concludes the video. We've reverse engineered direct mode in the previous video. And then this video, we've reverse engineered the effect modes and figured out the parameters, the speed, direction, and then how to apply and how to save. I'm just going to do some code cleanup, and then I will push this to the branch, and then hopefully merge it into OpenRGB pipeline pretty soon. So uh, that has been reverse engineering the RGB on the ASUS ROG Ally. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.